Abraham Lincoln, From Log Cabin to the White House Written by B. Silverberg Introduction Abraham Lincoln, one of the most famous American presidents, is remembered for his dedication to freedom. Lincoln led the United States during the Civil War, 1861 to 1865, when the northern and southern states fought to decide the future of the country. He is known as the Great Emancipator because he freed the slaves. After the war, the United States became one nation, pledged to freedom and democracy for all. We think of Abraham Lincoln as a great American folk hero and tell many stories and legends about him. He is often pictured as tall, lanky, and solemn. He is remembered as a common man who was born in a log cabin in Kentucky with little regular schooling. Yet he became a great lawyer, speaker, and political leader. His eloquent speeches about freedom, justice, and uniting all Americans are carved in stone at the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. His belief was simple. As I would not be a slave, so I would not be a master. This expresses my idea of democracy. The Early Years Abraham Lincoln was born to Thomas and Nancy Hanks Lincoln on February 12, 1809, on a small log cabin farm near Hodgenville, Kentucky. After moving to nearby Knob Creek, Abe and his older sister Sarah went to school for short periods during the winters. His mother Nancy encouraged their education, but his father Tom wanted Abe to help with chores. When Abe was seven, the family moved to Indiana, hoping for a better life. Two years after Tom built a new log cabin, Nancy became ill with milk sickness and died. Abe and Sarah mourned the death of their hard-working, loving mother. Soon after, Abe's father married Sarah Bush Johnston, a widow and mother of three whom Tom had known in Kentucky. With love and care, she created a warm life for Abe and Sarah. She encouraged Abe as he grew into a tall, awkward youth. He spent much time in the woods using his axe to fell trees and split logs for fences, wagons, and farm equipment. Friends told of Abe's moody quietness, even though Abe told homey, humorous stories. Abe went to school for only a few weeks in the winters, walking 18 miles, 29 kilometers, daily. Mostly, he educated himself by borrowing books and newspapers from neighbors and travelers. These were frontier days, when people moved westward, following Daniel Boone, Johnny Appleseed, and other pioneers. Their stories and the books he read sparked ideas of a world larger than Abe's backwoods. They prepared him for adulthood and his political career. As a teenager, Abe, now a strong six feet four inches, two meters, traveled down the Mississippi on a flatboat loaded with produce. He floated, steering with a pole, to the busy port of New Orleans, where he saw the city's wonders and people of many colors and nationalities. For the first time, Abe saw black men, women, and children chained at slave-holding pens and auction blocks to be bought and sold. After Abe's return, his father again moved the family westward to central Illinois, near the town of Decatur. Abe helped his father build a new log cabin and soon after left the homestead at age 22. In the frontier village of New Salem, Abe worked various jobs including storekeeper, surveyor, and carpenter. He became well-known as a wrestler and as a skilled orator in the New Salem Debating Society. He ran for the Illinois State Legislature, losing in 1832, but succeeding two years later. A lawyer and fellow legislator, John Todd Stewart, encouraged Abe to study law. Abe read law books passed the exams in March 1837, and joined Stewart's law practice, moving to Springfield, where the Illinois legislature met. 
Law and Politics Abraham Lincoln's views were based on his strong belief in democratic rights for the common man, that each person was important regardless of wealth or privilege. He became a respected member of the Whig Party, supporting strong central government in Washington, D.C. The other leading party, the Democrats, believed in states' rights, or that states should control their own affairs without interference from Washington. At the age of 30, Lincoln met his future wife, Mary Ann Todd. She was the fashionable daughter of a wealthy Kentucky banker. Her background was very different from Lincoln's, yet they fell in love. After overcoming Mary's parents' objections, they married on November 4, 1842. In 1843, their first son, Robert, was born. In 1846, Lincoln won the election for Illinois representative to the U.S. Congress and moved to Washington, D.C. with his family. Lincoln was in Congress as the northern and southern states became more divided over the issue of slavery. The North depended on free laborers in its factories and small farms and believed in a strong central government. Slavery was outlawed in the northern states. The South, whose economy revolved around king cotton grown on large plantations, used slave labor. Slaves, primarily black Africans, were owned as property. Most lived under very poor conditions and were treated inhumanely. They had no personal or civil rights. The laws of southern states allowed and protected slavery. The United States expanded as western territories applied for statehood. Would these states enter as free or slave states? The South wanted new lands for slave-grown cotton. The North wanted the country to promote independent farms and free labor. Lincoln opposed slavery, but as an Illinois representative in Washington, he believed that the practice was protected by the state laws in the South. However, he fought the spread of slavery in the Western territories. During the 1840s, the abolitionist movement, which wanted to outlaw slavery, grew. Its followers, both whites and free blacks, demanded an end to the horrors and inhumanity of holding humans in bondage. Lincoln returned to Springfield after two years in Washington and for the next few years shared a successful law practice with his partner, William Herndon. Lincoln became known for his honesty, legal abilities, wit, and fine oratory. In February 1850, Abraham and Mary faced tragedy when their boy Eddie, nearly four years old, died of tuberculosis. Both parents were deeply depressed, and Mary showed signs of emotional imbalance. In December of that year, a son named William Wallace was born, and three years later came another son, Thomas, or Tad for short. Lincoln was very close to his sons and was a proud and loving father. America Divided Meanwhile, in the 1850s, the pro- and anti-slavery forces struggled for power. Congress passed the Kansas-Nebraska Act in 1854. This canceled an earlier law that forbade slavery in these territories. The new law allowed the residents to decide whether they wanted to be free or slave states. This principle of letting the people decide, called popular sovereignty, was introduced by an old political rival of Lincoln's, Stephen Douglas, now a U.S. senator from Illinois. Abraham decided it was time to speak out against the spread of slavery and to try again for political office. He joined the New Republican Party, which opposed slavery, and was nominated in 1858 as their candidate for senator. His opponent was his old enemy, Senator Douglas. During the campaign, they held the Lincoln-Douglas debates, which captured the attention of the country. Lincoln, with great oratorical skill, exclaimed that slavery was causing a national crisis. A house divided against itself cannot stand. I believe this government cannot endure permanently half-slave and half-free. Lincoln argued that blacks were entitled to the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, just like whites. 
Douglas said that the Constitution guaranteed equality only to white citizens, not to blacks. Each state, he believed, had the right to decide whether it would be slave or free. Lincoln lost the election, but the debates made him popular, particularly in the Republican Party. By 1860, he was the party's choice for president. In his campaign rallies and parades, he was called Honest Abe, the homespun rail splitter, a man of the people who stood for equality and freedom. On November 6, 1860, Lincoln was elected president of the United States. The North and the Western territories rejoiced. The South was outraged. Even before Lincoln's inauguration on March 4, 1861, seven Southern states voted to secede from the United States of America. By February, the pro-slavery states had established a government, the Confederate States of America, under President Jefferson Davis, and prepared for war. The War Years President Lincoln, still hoping to avoid bloodshed, said in his inauguration speech, In your hands, my dissatisfied countrymen, and not in mine, is the momentous issue of civil war. But events moved swiftly, and by April 14th, northern troops had surrendered Fort Sumter after South Carolina cannons fired on the fort. Both sides, the Union and the Confederacy, quickly mobilized, calling volunteers and collecting arms and supplies. President Lincoln, from his home and office in the Union City of Washington, D.C., could look across the river to the Confederate state of Virginia. The South's superior military leadership defeated Union forces in the first battle at Bull Run. Lincoln struggled to find strong commanders to lead the Union troops throughout the war. Under General George B. McClellan, the Union armies had some successes, but by 1862 they were stopped by Confederate General Robert E. Lee. Although Union forces controlled New Orleans and the Mississippi River, there were few victories. Lincoln took over more of the military planning as the North called for action. Enormous numbers of young soldiers on both sides were killed, wounded, or missing as the war continued into its second year. For Mary and Abraham Lincoln, personal loss threw them into deep despair. Their second son, Willie, died of fever in February 1862. Mary would never fully recover from her grief. Abraham shared his great sadness when he met with the many families mourning war dead. On the war front, the Union lost the Second Battle of Bull Run, and at Antietam in September 1862, both sides suffered the bloodiest engagement of the war. Powerful Republican senators urged President Lincoln to make the abolition of slavery a war goal. They argued that to fight the war successfully, the Union needed to remove the issue that caused the war. Lincoln was finally convinced that as president, he had the authority to order abolition in the South. On January 1, 1863, the Emancipation Proclamation went into effect, freeing thenceforth and forever all the slaves in the South. Freed blacks rushed to join the Union Army, and by the end of the war, over 180,000 former slaves had volunteered. The summer of 1863 brought victory to Union forces at Gettysburg, a turning point in the war. President Lincoln, while dedicating a cemetery to the many soldiers who had died on both sides, delivered his famous Gettysburg Address. The speech lasted only two minutes, yet it is remembered for its simple beauty and eloquence. Lincoln spoke of the war as a test of whether the nation could survive as a democracy. He challenged those still alive to complete the unfinished work of those who had died, that the government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Under the newly appointed General Ulysses S. Grant, the Union armies were victorious in the West and South. Lincoln saw hope of the war's end as Confederate troops were defeated in Georgia and Virginia in late 1864. 
he was re-elected president and, in early 1865, cheered the congressional passage of the 13th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, which prohibited slavery in the United States. The war ended on April 9, 1865, four years after it began, and cost 600,000 lives. The Union was preserved and slavery was abolished. But only six days later, President Abraham Lincoln lay dead from an assassin's bullet. A Confederate sympathizer, John Wilkes Booth, shot Lincoln while he attended a play at Washington's Ford Theater. As Lincoln's body was carried back to his beloved Illinois on a funeral train, mourners by the roadside silently saluted this great American hero. Timeline 1809 Abraham Lincoln born on February 12th in Kentucky. 1818 Abraham's mother, Nancy, dies. Thomas Lincoln marries Sarah Bush Johnson the following year. 1834. Lincoln elected to Illinois State Legislature. 1837. Opens law practice in Springfield, Illinois. 1842. Abraham marries Mary Todd. 1846. Lincoln elected to U.S. House of Representatives. 1850. Four-year-old son Edward dies. 1858. Lincoln-Douglas debates. Lincoln becomes a leader on anti-slavery issue. 1860. Lincoln elected president of the U.S. 1861. Civil war begins when Confederates fire on Fort Sumter. 1862. Son William dies at age 12. Battle of Antietam. 1863. Lincoln issues Emancipation Proclamation. Union victory at Gettysburg. 1865. Confederate forces surrender, ending the Civil War. Lincoln shot on the evening of April 14th and dies the following day. Explore more. At the library. Ask your librarian to help you find more books about Abraham Lincoln. You may also want to look for books about the Civil War and the end of slavery. On the web. In the address window, type www.google.com. Then type Abraham Lincoln. Click on Google Search. Read the colored links. Click on one that looks interesting. When you want to explore other links, click the back arrow on the top left. You can also try different searches, Civil War, Emancipation Proclamation, Lincoln-Douglas Debates, or Abolition. Historical Perspective Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation was only the first step toward granting African Americans equal rights. Until the Civil Rights Movement of the 1960s, African Americans were routinely denied jobs, voting rights, and basic human respect. Ask your librarian about books on the Civil Rights Movement or search the Internet for Civil Rights Movement or Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr.